next up is Velasca. Um, I believe, are they actually a genuine Italian brand or yes. are they German too? Yes, they are. They're an Italian brand, I think, founded in Milan. Okay. But then the shoes are made in like Middle Italy. I think it's the town of Marche. It's like a city that makes a lot of shoes. Mm -hmm. And so most of the Italian made shoes we review here probably all come from the same town. Mm -hmm. It's just how they, how they work, right? Oftentimes you have that concentration of silk industry in Como, wool fabric industry in Biella. It's just very funny how there's a strong concentration where 150 families all choose to do the same thing. So what was interesting about contacting them is that they ended up sending us multiple pairs. Uh, in my case, I got two fairly different styles. This one here is a black single monk strap shoe. On the box that I was given, they called the model the Verdurat, uh, but I believe it's marketed under a different name on their website now. I believe it goes under the name Garçon. All right. So whatever the case may be, that's this model. It's the Black Single Monk. And the other one, this is called the Ost, and it is, as you can see, a brown loafer style. Okay, it looks very soft there. Very soft, yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll get into that in a moment. I have the model Cavadan. First impression out of a box, it felt like pretty nice shoe for under $200. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, leathers seem nice and soft. I think Italians are really good at having like softer shoes. Like the British shoes are in general all a little stiffer, mm -hmm. right? Italians are just softer. Right. Yeah, my first impressions for each of these, uh, the single monk, I thought it was a nice sort of understated, dependable shoe, not too flashy. Uh, this is actually the first monk strap shoe in my collection. Black is definitely more a conservative color. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a very kind of conservative cut as well. So venturing into that world of monk straps, but taking a very small step with a conservative style. Got it. What, what it kind of surprised me was that their styling was more English or conservative. Mm -hmm. The last weren't as kind of refined. They were almost a little kind of boxy and clunky in the toe, very round, mm -hmm. very traditional. Yeah, I was surprised by that because typically if you think of Italian, they're a little more fashion forward and, and those lasts are not at all like that. Right. Now with their suede, what I really like is they made it waterproof. So suede can be hard to clean and then sometimes you have to spray stuff on but it wears off. Here, I think they put it in the tanning process. And on their website, they're very like detailed. They say it's a calf suede and they explain that you can have different ways to make a suede. You can just turn it inside out or you can kind of sand it. Mm -hmm. They didn't actually share which version it is for this one, mm -hmm. which kind of surprised me. Mm -hmm. But I can say it's very soft. It's um, waterproof, put it under the sink and it just curls right off. I haven't uh, tried any waterproofing tests with this one, but it was probably out of all of the shoes we were sent, the one that I was, I had the most sort of curious reaction to right out of the box because as you alluded to earlier, it's very soft. It's got a very kind of flexible construction. There's no reinforcement to the heel here, yep. which I frankly was not accustomed to. Ultimately, it seems to me like this is really more of a, it's almost like a slipper with a hard sole. So in terms of fit for each of these, I thought out of the two of them, the single monk fit better. It was not a perfect fit. There was some, I wouldn't go so far as to say pinching, but there was some tightness in a few areas around the shoe. Uh, that may just be <laughs> that my feet are not really accustomed to wearing monk straps, so I might have to play with using the little sizing buckle here if I need to, exactly. just to figure out what the ideal fit is. I mean, they also have slightly different lasts, so that can be a difference too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, with these loafers, it, it may have something to do with the fact that the, the heel here is so flexible, but out of all the models we tried, these were the loosest out of the bunch for me. What size did you have? For both of these, I had a 41 and a half European sizing. Uh, so it's interesting that these fit me better. Again, you know, that's because they're, they're a higher style, so they cover more of your foot. But with these, as I say, these were definitely the loosest out of any model we tried. 
I might almost want to size down to a 41 or maybe even a 40 and a half. That's, that's how loose they were. My heels almost pop right out of these if I try to walk in them. Okay. So what, what size did you have in this Caruso? In those I had a 41. So maybe sizing down to a 41 in these as well would be beneficial. Yeah. I think, again, I just followed the instructions or the sizing guide on their website to determine what I needed. But, you know, when you're new to a brand, it's probably going to be, at least for your first pair, a little bit of trial and error if you're not sure exactly how the last is going yeah. to correspond to your foot. And that's how I think we can help you understanding what what's the right size for you based on other shoes you've already had in mm -hmm. the past. The shoes are comfortable because the uppers is very soft. The soles need a little bit of break in, but um, nothing, nothing major really. It's still overall a comfortable shoe. Just like I said, it's too roomy, which is fine for comfort, but it's just gonna crease more. Right. Yeah, I would definitely echo those sentiments. Um, the, the single monk sole will need some break in, but I didn't even, you know, flexing as much as I could while stepping, didn't see a lot of creasing in the leather. That may increase a little bit as the sole breaks in, but who knows? Mm. Uh, I thought good first impressions there. And again, with these, they're certainly comfortable enough, but they're just so big on just me. Just too big a sizing mm -hmm. thing. I mean, overall, you know, I have a leather heel, right, built up. There's not too much like edge dressing or detail work. Mm -hmm. I think like the Merriman had, had more in that regard to offer. But this is also a under $200 shoe. Mm -hmm. So overall, I think it's, it's, a, it's a good value shoe. All right, yeah, I mean, look is more English than Italian. I'd say Scarasso is the softest, and then maybe those because the sole is a little stiffer, and then maybe Ace Marks, the other Italian, mm -hmm. it's maybe even a little stiffer. Overall, they're all relatively soft compared to English shoes, but I would rank them like that. Um, yeah, size 44. I, I'd give it a four out of five because it's 195, you know, it's a very traditional style. You can wear them a lot. All of their shoes are like that. They're evergreen shoes. Mm -hmm. So when you're starting out and you don't want to spend much money and you want a conservative style, I think they're good. If you want a little more Italian styling, maybe the Scaroso is better. Yeah, I would say the same. Uh, in my case, I gave these single monks here a three and a half just for some of those fit concerns really more than anything. Yep. Uh, if I were to dial that fit in more, these would probably go up to a four, maybe even higher. Uh, and these loafers here, Again, I, I was just so taken by, by how flexible this heel was yeah. and the fact that the fit was so uh, lacking. I, I went down as low as a three out of five with these. Yeah. Could maybe go lower, but then again, if they fit better, could maybe go higher too. Yeah. So I settled on a three ultimately. Should have probably just sent them back and gotten a different size. Probably. <laughs>